Hi, thank you for joining us at Hearts Virtual Field Day. I'm Dr. Ron Ford, and together with Aaron Templemeyer, today we'll be discussing growing pecans in Missouri. I'm the tree breeder and geneticist at the University of Missouri's Center for Agroforestry. Uh, my research emphasizes the applied improvement of tree nuts. Uh, this includes black nuts, Chinese chestnuts, northern origin pecan, and hybrid hazelnut. Um, my field research is mostly at, at HARC, uh, where we have extensive mature collections of cultivated forms of these tree nuts. Uh, I'll let Aaron take a second to briefly introduce himself. Hi, my name is Aaron Templemeyer. I work with the University of Missouri's Center for Agroforestry. I work with a lot of different fruit and nut crops, and I'm excited to be talking more with you about the pecans today. Okay, thank you, Aaron. Uh, pecans have well-established markets. Uh, this extends to uh, both regional, uh, local, and domestic markets. So there's a lot of options and that you can cater towards the size of your desired orchard. Uh, pecans are also uh, multifunctional, so they provide ample shade, uh, nice yellow fall foliage, uh, great wildlife uh, forage, so they're great for hunting oriented properties, um, and then uniquely uh, they're a great low input option for flood prone lands. Um, so if you have um, some marginal row crop acreage due to flooding, uh, pecan might be a suitable alternative. Um, soil requirements, uh, deep alluvial soils are, are most characteristic of those that are suitable for pecan. These extend to those that are along lowland waterways. Uh, clay to sandy loam textures, well-drained is a, a pretty strict requirement. And then pecan can tolerate short-term flooding. Generally, it's thought up to five days um, of like standing water or saturated water due to flooding uh, can be tolerated by pecan. Uh, there will be some physiological cost after five days, but there might still even be some tolerance to, to flooding that at that severity as well. Upland soils can, can also support pecans, um, but there's some requirements. Greater than three feet of friable topsoil should be uh, penetrable by the roots. Also like gravelly uh, clay subsoil that is root penetrable should provide um, the opportunity to cultivate pecan and have some regular uh, cropping uh, expectations. Pecan has a very high water demand. Uh, mature trees during the growing season uh, can demand up to 4,000 gallons of water per acre per day. Um, fortunately in Missouri, um, we get somewhat regular and, and high levels of uh, rainfall. And so technically pecans could be grown and they could fruit without irrigation. Uh, that said, irrigation does aid consistent fruiting and nut quality. What that means is that uh, even with minor water deficiencies, nut quality can be all altered uh, and that usually occurs through um, altering the size. Pecan, pecan fruit development occurs over four distinct stages throughout the growing season and that's elongation where the nut grows lengthwise, um, expansion where the nut grows in width, kernel filling, and followed by shuck opening. In each of these stages, if you experience a water deficiency, you could experience altered nut morphology and thus altered um, nut quality. And we'll just focus on the first example on the image to the right here, where it notes a water deficit uh, during early summer, June to July 15th, basically results in a truncated, more spherical nut compared to a more typical uh, oblong nut where the, long, the nut would be longer. With the water deficit during this elongation phase, the nut does not elongate and thus it changes the morphology. Underlying point being that irrigation, even in Missouri, could aid the consistency of fruiting and stability of nut quality. Uh, the type of pecan plantings are based on the source of plant materials used. Uh, the first source is uh, scion cultivars that are grafted to rootstock uh, and established in a traditional uh, orchard layout with, with rows and regular management. The second is utilizing uh, native sources of material. And so that can exist as uh, mature native stands of pecans that you can gro uh, groom into groves or, or orchards for uh, easing management harvest. Or it could mean um, taking uh, seeds from native trees, 
and using those to establish seedling plantings or seedling orchards. These could be less intensively managed, especially if you're grooming um, around native mature trees, um, or you could use some combination of both of these approaches. You can uh, leverage native materials as a, a source of rootstock, for example, and graft scion cultivars onto those uh, seedlings. Um, some, some main trade-offs um, for improved orchards, you're gonna have higher productivity, um, probably higher kernel quality. Um, you might have a known level of disease resistance or other pest tolerance. Um, however, you're gonna have to wait for those to come to maturity. Native groves uh, and grooming them into an orchard, you might get into bearing years more quickly. However, bearing per acre will likely be uh, lower than the improved orchards uh, and quality might, uh, might vary. Considerations for uh, cultivar selection um, comprise the, the following bulleted list here, uh, which we'll break down uh, further in the subsequent slides. Um, first, um, details regarding adaptation. Um, obviously, we have, we have native stands in this, uh, this range, um, but as it relates to uh, the adaptation of specific cultivars, we see these adaptation zones that are reflected in the image to the right, and primarily they're based off of length of the growing season and winter hardiness in Missouri. Uh, and so if you find our extension report uh, titled the same uh, as this presentation uh, on our extension website, you'll see cultivar recommendations are made per these adaptation zones. Um, so like the growing season, um, a few aspects about how that can influence um, the performance of cultivars. Uh, Ill-adapted cultivars will fill poorly, and you see an example of filling um, in the cross section of the, the nut in the middle of the slide here, with the top nut being very poorly filled. Um, sufficient um, summer heat will um, negatively impact the ability for nut development. Um, so poorly adapted cultivars will have smaller, more undeveloped nuts than well adapted cultivars in our region. Um, typically this relates to uh, nighttime temperatures being above a thir certain threshold for nut development to occur. I believe this is 80, around 88 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, Nut maturity before first freeze. Um, usual, there's a wide range of um, harvest date uh, phenology in, in cultivars. And typically you wanna pick a nut that matures about two weeks before the average first freeze date for your region so that you could allow yourself a little bit of buffer for environmental variation. Winter hardiness, uh, our region experiences extreme winter temperatures as it relates to pecans. Um, larger growing regions for pecan are, are typically further south. Uh, and so those cultivars do not readily transfer here. Um, what we recommend for cultivation here are um, northern cultivars. So those that have proven winter tolerance in our region um, and were selected in more of the northern extent of the native range. Uh, there are a few exceptions to that rule, but it is a, a strict few. Um, and it, so there are several uh, southern cultivars that can be cultivated in Missouri's boot heel. So you'll see that as adaptation zone five on the, the image to the right. Consistent annual bearing is prioritized over total yield. Pecans have a tendency to alternate bear with high bearing years and low bearing years. And a priority for Orchard establishment is consistent year-to-year -year bearing. Um, some moderate uh, heavy bearing cultivars uh, can be tempered through using a tree shaker for summer crop thinning. And we have a demo video of this later. Flowering and pollination. Uh, pecans have separate male and female flowers, as you can see in the image to, to the right here. Um, with the catkins being the male flowers and the pistillate uh, female flowers being at the terminal end of that branch. Um, 
these flowers on a given tree bloom at different times and thus do not self-pollinate. Um, so selecting for two, at least two different cultivars that have um, phenological times where they can cross-pollinate each other is advantageous. And so this means selecting both pertangerous and pertogenous cultivars. Um, pertogenous means the female flower blooms first, followed by the male flower, and pertogenous the opposite. And so selecting cultivars across both of these classes can help um, meet pollination needs at the orchard level. Um, the larger nut generally attracts the unaware customer and commands a better wholesale price. So larger nuts are usually the um, goal of the domestic or international markets because they have a better overall um, visual appearance. Uh, aware customers uh, generally seek moderately sized, uh, high quality nuts, and, and these demand uh, good uh, direct-to-consumer pricing. Uh, these types of nuts are what Missouri growers are better able to produce um, because of the shorter growing season with lower temperatures. Um, we're just set up to produce more medium to small size nuts rather than larger size nuts which are produced more in the southern U.S. environments. Uh, high quality generally means over 50% kernel a uh, high oil content, and a light straw colored kernel. So you see two examples of what uh, high quality kernels might look like to your right with Kanza and Hark. Uh, and Kanza would be the sort of golden standard in our region for uh, quality, particularly as to its um, really light color. Um, Kanza also shells very nicely. Um, so percent shelling so that you get these really um, intact halves uh, like you see in the picture uh, is another really important consideration for, for quality. Disease and crop management is really important as well because um, we need to consider input costs as they relate to our expected markets and pricing. So this relates to nut size and, and quality. Um, we certainly want to make sure that we're setting up profitable um, enterprises and so we want to have uh, do our best to pick uh, cultivars that have uh, basically high direct-to-consumer pricing due to their nut qualities but also very low um, input costs uh, such as the like fungicide sprays for disease management. Um, a really nice summary of this and how it might be changing for U.S. growers even beyond the Missouri region is uh, written up by Dr. Lenny Wells of uh, the University of Georgia in the Pecan South magazine. Uh, it's entitled Growing Pecans for Today's Market and it'll give great insight on uh, balancing input costs um, based on expected price um, for your nut quality. Uh, pecan scab is a really big player in this um, conversation as far as cost management. Pecan scab is prolific throughout the U.S. Um, in most growing regions uh, that are in the central uh, part of the U.S. And, and over to the southeast where we get ample rainfall. Um, the fungus will basically grow throughout the, the summer and require regular uh, foliar sprays for management. In, in Georgia, depending on the amount of rainfall in a given year, you could see upwards of uh, 10 sprays per growing season. The um, disease um, expression is seen in the picture to the left with the black uh, necrotic areas on uh, the shuck. You can see some on the leaf tissue as well. Um, but fortunately, there are resistant cultivars and some that have shown rather durable resistance uh, across many decades. Uh, and they're available in, in our growing region. Um, resistance from nature or any of its offspring ha has been very durable. And, and fortunately, those um, cultivars have rather high nut quality. Um, and so they make the basis for a lot of our recommendations, uh, which we see here. The cultivars listed here are uh, designed to get you started in your, your research. Uh, 
as you seek to select cultivars that you might want to adopt. These might be what we'd consider the most elite of our cultivar offerings, uh, although it's certainly not a comprehensive list. Uh, each of these cultivars has a high level of, of well vetted uh, scab resistance in our region, uh, as well as great kernel uh, quality. Um, so each of these should lend themselves well to low input production systems that cater well to direct to consumer marketing. Major is uh, the oldest cultivar on this list, uh, and it's actually parented uh, a majority of the others you see here, starting with Kanza, which probably has the uh, best kernel quality and flavor out of the bunch. Um, Osage and Lakota do so suffer um, from some alternate bearing, but that can be moderated by uh, tree shaking midsummer. Um, and then Major, uh, Kanza, and Osage also crack very well. The fractioning of the shell releases a very large percentage of halves, so it's very easy for marketing uh, whole kernels. Okay, I'll now hand it over to Aaron Templemeyer, who will take us through establishing pecan trees. So a few things you'll want to think about as a layout of your orchard, uh, the orchard site, weed control around your trees, especially when you're young, deer protection, and planting time. So if you'll be planting in the spring or in the fall. So orchard layouts, uh, you will definitely want to think about the tree spacing. You'll want to consider that Eventually, some of your trees will be thinned as the orchard ages because you'll really want to maximize sunlight for pecan trees. So weed control around your trees. Uh, commonly, that can be done with tillage, chemical herbicides, or mulch. So deer protection will be really important if you're in an area where there's a lot of deer pressure. Um, planting time spring or fall, part of that will be determined by also by the trees you choose to start with. If you're starting with bare root trees, you'll be planting in the spring. If you're starting with container grown trees, you have a little more flexibility. So when you're transplanting trees, uh, you'll want to consider a few things. So if you're starting with bare root trees, you'll want to plant as soon as the ground is workable. Ideally something like mid-March for Missouri. If you're starting with container grown trees, time planting for March or October can be ideal. If you're starting with seed, you're actually taking a pecan seed and planting it directly into the field where you want the tree to be. So you'll likely want to start with a lot more seed than you want trees because some of those seeds are likely to be eaten by wildlife got a little uh, demo video here of me planting a really small pecan tree. When I'm digging this hole, I, I dig it a little bit wider than the container, but I dig it to the same depth because when you put the tree in the hole, you want it to be approximately the depth it was in the container. You don't want to bury it deeper than it was in the container, but you also don't want it too much. Uh, you don't want it shallower, so you don't want any of those uh, roots to be sticking out above the ground when you plant the tree. So when we're talking about care of non-bearing trees, what we're talking about is care of young pecan trees that are not currently producing nuts. So there's some recommendations here for pruning and training young trees. Uh, recommendations for watering and fertilization. So uh, under fertilization is also weed control, which is really important. And again, we mentioned that earlier, that can be chemical weed control, which is using herbicides. Uh, it can be cultivation uh, or it can be mulch. When we say bearing trees, we're talking about pecan trees that are producing pecans. So fertilization, uh, Fertilization, especially nitrogen fertilization, can be really important for mature pecan trees because the trees are growing and they're producing pecans, and that uses a lot of energy. And so a general recommendation is 100 pounds of nitrogen per acre. Um, you would certainly want to adjust that based on things like soil tests, or even better would be tissue samples from the trees. Um, rosette is uh, caused by zinc deficiency. 
Zinc deficiency is, is not very common in Missouri, but in some areas in the U.S., zinc deficiency of pecan trees can certainly be a limiting factor to growing pecan trees. Um, some pests of pecans in Missouri are case bearer, uh, shuckworm, and pecan weevil. So when we're talking about equipment in pecan orchards, um, that can vary based on the size of the planting and the stage of life of the trees in the orchard. So there are just some general size classes and there are more details on these in the Growing Pecans in Missouri publication. Uh, but basically, uh, the equipment you'll need, the size of the equipment, um, the power of some of the equipment will vary based on the size of the orchard and whether your trees are young, not bearing, or just beginning to bear, but still small trees, or whether you're dealing with very large, mature trees. Some common equipment that um, exists in many pecan orchards uh, would be a tractor of some size, a mower or brush hog, and if you're at a productive stage of the orchard and you've got pecans that need to uh, be harvested, a tree shaker and harvester, and also sprayers um, for pest and disease management. We've got a few video clips here. This one is of a pecan shaker about to be used. So normally if you were shaking a tree at this time of the season, you would be doing uh, possibly some nut thinning if the tree was overloaded with pecans. Uh, but if you were doing that, normally use a nut style shaker pads on the back of the pecan tree shaker. Um, these are actually just the regular pads that you would use for a harvest in the fall, early winter. And you can see the hydraulics lock the pads tightly on the tree. And I only shook it very briefly. You can kind of see them a little bit there. There they go. A lot of leaves fall. So that's the tree shaker. And we've got another video clip here. This is a pecan harvester. And this is what picks the pecans up off the ground after the shaker has knocked them off the tree. This is just a brief overview of how the machine functions. You see it's got those uh, groups of fingers underneath it that kind of rake the top of the ground for pecans or anything else. And debris is blown out the back while pecans fall into the machine onto an auger, and then they go across the machine and up and are deposited into a container or hopper right there. And so that hopper can be moved hydraulically to dump the nuts into a truck or transfer. So when we're talking about pecan harvest in Missouri, uh, the real story is of timing. Timing is so critical in terms of getting those nuts shaken off those trees and picked up off the ground because the longer they stay out there, the more predators will have a chance to eat your crop. And losses to predators in Missouri can be very significant. Um, so weather can be unpredictable towards pecan harvest, so it's really important that on days when it's possible to harvest that the harvest is done in a timely fashion. So pecans will be harvested off the ground, so it's important to consider the ground cover and having that mowed before harvest, soil moisture. Uh, it's important to do harvest as much as you can on days when um, the ground is not so moist that it's mud. So that means ideally it's dry or even potentially frozen and debris removal. So you want to make sure large branches and sticks are off the orchard. And it's important after pecans are harvested to keep them cold. Uh, pecans can store well frozen in uh, different forms. 
Uh, freezers can maintain the nut quality for two years. Uh, cracked pecans and kernels, once the shells off, can decrease rapidly in quality. So they may taste worse and they may also darken in color. Okay, thank you, Aaron. If anyone has questions following this presentation, uh, please feel free to get in con contact with Aaron or I. Um, our email uh, addresses are listed below and we'd be happy to answer any uh, pecan related questions for you. Uh, additional resources for you. Dr. Bill Reed, uh, formerly of Kansas State University, has a wonderful blog titled Northern Pecans. Uh, the blog is also searchable, so it's very easy to um, filter through his um, wealth of uh, observations or detailed records um, to get to what you're looking for. Um, we sort of consider this as essential reading for Midwestern pecan growers, and you can see the blog link there. Uh, the University of Georgia also has uh, extensive resources uh, covering uh, their long-term breeding program, historical cultivar records, or uh, a variety of extension work related to uh, uh, management and cultivation. Uh, there's also local nut growers organizations that would be great for any uh, new nut growers to the community. Um, that would be the Missouri as well as the Northern Nut Growers Associations. Uh, the University of Missouri Center for Agroforestry, of course, also has some additional resources which can be found at the uh, publication link below. Um, there'll be several um, extension reports specific to pecan, uh, including one which gives the overview of uh, the materials uh, presented here. Thank you again for, for joining us uh, for this presentation as well as for the, the HARC Virtual Field Day. Um, we hope you enjoyed it and hope that we get to see you in person next year. Bye.